hello guys welcome to my channel chemical diary in this video i am going to explain you about the sulfur recovery unit uh, and storage you know in last video i have covered about the clause process that is sulfur recovery unit or modified clause process how we recover sulfur and uh, in some video i have showed you about the tgt also tail gas treating unit in which uh, what are the unconverted uh, gas from the clause furnace how, how it is utilized and again sent back to sru and another video i have also covered about the granulation of sulfur solid sulfur handling so today video i am going to explain about the liquid sulfur handling which is collected from the different types of condenser from sru so this is one of the important video of uh, sru I am posting this video in every little details because I have seen there are so many viewers for SRU so I have decided to make uh, in deep details about the different types of uh, processes or units involved in sulfur recovery unit so you, you are going to see about this uh, of liquid sulfur handling now let's start and today video I am going to cover about the forms of sulfur how sulfur is transported and how we store liquid sulfur and different types of storage bed sizing sulfur tank insulation and heat tracing when and where it is used and also you will going to learn about the sulfur heaters and submerged pump and uh, different types of lts or pt which types of are used and you will going to learn about that material of construction and uh, about underground pits and wind pipe and heat tracing and steam um, and steam jacketing and uh, different types of jacketed of uh, jacketed steam jacketed plug walls so i'm going to cover so have a look and let's start again so tears we we receive sulfur from different condenser i have explained you about the sru uh, anyhow i will give you a little description of what sru then we will proceed then it will be easier for understanding uh, we get uh, h2s from aru sws and tgtu so that h2s will get burn in sulfur furnace once h2s is burn and after that we get sulfur in liquid form and uh, it go to that Con waste heat boiler then go to the clauses reactor again condenser and again clause reactor again condenser from different types of condenser we get sulfur and that sulfur will be collected here this is called the sulfur storage pit so this is the sulfur from different condenser one condenser two condenser three condenser or four or two it's all depend upon the production or the I can say that uh, capacity of your plant so we receive different kinds of uh, from different unit and you know this tank is uh, jacketed and uh, steam steam coils are inside and uh, we receive sulfur from different condenser but here we add bubbling air in the tank this is the main tank which we receive sulfur from the close reaction close reactor once this receive from sru you know the sulfur will have h2s and so many gases so these gases should be removed so so that we can store sulfur without any gases or without any in vaporization form so so for this reason we supply bubbling air this is com comprised of a la uh, of a pipe and which have a distributor so from here plant air is introduced and uh, here we will have bubbles and uh, these bubbles uh, are steam jacketed and uh, what i can say that uh, if in case of blockage we can supply steam and uh, continuously what uh, we can deplug so for this reason steam jacketing is given uh, so that uh, it should not plug in case of uh, shutdown so for that reason however temperature is maintained and these are reverse inserted bubbling and um, the pressure of the air will be that much that sulfur will not go inside so here we will have different types of bubbles so when self uh, so this is called bubbling air when air is produced in the sulfur the whatever the gases present in the yeah, in this pit uh, h2s will get come and here we will have another provision for pipe that is called sweeping air so sweeping is air is introduced so that whatever the 
H2S generated or the gas generated by bubbling will come up so this should be removed so there must be a pressure to remove this uh, remove these gases so for that we introduce a sweeping air provision so whatever the gas are there are sweep away to here so whatever the gas in the sulfur will go to incinerator very less amount of gases are comes so that is why we send it to incinerator generally normally there will be no flow for tgtu why because uh, from condenser very less or negligible amount of uh, gases are there but, uh, so that's why we send it to the incinerator to burn up but uh, we have given one TGT, one line for TGTU, there will be one wall, once we open it go to TGTU, this line will not be used but it given for future provision, for example if your close reactor have some problem and it's not uh, due to some problem, air is go, uh, H2S or uh, more, more amount of gases are generated are coming via condenser, so at that time uh, you need not to shut down the plant for this reason so you can continue till further the problems are fixed so you can send if more gases are generated you will close the wall to the incinerator and all the gases will go to TGTU which will be recovered and sent back to the close reactor so uh, this provision is given generally it is not, not, not used just given for future purpose so this is about the sulfur collection pit from different condenser so we use bubble air and sweeping air and uh, all the sulfur whatever the collected will get transported with the help of either some people some companies keep submergible pump or side pump so generally mostly submergible pump pumps are used so with the help of submergible pump sulfur is transported to different types of tanks steam jacketed tanks so i have i told you that i will explain you about the different types of tanks these tanks are steam jacketed steam jacketed tanks and mainly it is used to store the sulfur in liquid form so this that should be steam jacketed and these tanks are insulated to to maintain the temperature um, below what i can say that um, below 100 and more than 135 so in the tanks so we have to maintain temperature about um, 100 to 135 the melting point of sulfur is 110 to 120 depending upon the different types of sulfur like so there are, we have different types of sulfur like uh, rhombic and monoclinic polyclinic and uh, so many forms of sulfur so depending upon that so whatever the sulfur is collected all these pipes are steam jacketed steam jacketed pipe is nothing but a pipe with pipe for example take one pipe and inside one more pipe so inside pipe sulfur will go and outside there will be steam provision steam will go continuously so this is how we transfer sulfur but you know here we have bend and after that uh, we will have connection here so for that we will add flange but uh, when we connect from pipe to pipe pipe to pipe then there may be a chances that uh, uh, sulfur solidification take place for that reason we use steam jump over steam jump over is used uh, which will help to reduce the uh, heat losses and all these pipe this pipe this pipe this pipe all are steam jacketed along with heat tracing why heat tracing in uh, heat tracing are used when uh, when due to steam failure or due to some problem if we enable to we have to maintain the temperature if you don't maintain the temperature then sulfur will get solidified so for that reason heat tracing is there if temperature goes below of the required uh, temperature then heat tracing will get activated and the temperature will get maintained with the help of steam tracing steam tracing are of two type one is uh, some companies use electrical some company use steam type heat tracing okay so this is about the process about this now we will see uh, transfer of sulfur sulfur is transfer uh, uh, transfer by two two method one is solid and liquid you know solid sulfur tank uh, sulfur is very easy so for that reason we send it to granulation unit uh, so you will see this uh, in another video uh, which I have posted that is called sulfur granulation you will see about that uh, sulfur uh, solid sulfur but today I am going to explain you about the liquid sulfur transfer liquid sulfur is transferred via 
tanks or wire tanks and those tanks should be steam jacketed it means inside steam jacketed should be there and close once you receive liquid sulfur that uh, tanker should be steam jacketed and there should be a, either electric uh, what heating coil and that, that tanker should be insulated if you want to transfer but uh, these uh, these steam jacketed tanks are maybe helpful for uh, short uh, duration of time or short duration of transport transportation but for uh, long duration like for one to three days four days not uh, applicable this will be very costly so it's better to transport transport sulfur in solid form like granule form pellet form or we can see that say that sulfur seeds or seeds form so sulfur is transferred by a by a pipe and uh, via pipe but steaming is important in this uh, in this when we transfer why because uh, sulfur plugage should not take place when we transfer that's why steaming is very much important okay now you are going to learn about the storage pit different types of storage pits are used for example tanks are used if uh, tanks is used then there there must be either the, it should be uh, uh, what coated with nace or, uh, or 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 it should be blanketed with uh, brick brick lining should be there inside the tank why because sulfur is very acidic have high acidity content so all the material will get eat, eat away and there may be leakage from the for the tanks so for that reason we have to maintain uh, we have to keep tank either with the help of nays or use ss but your ss will be very costly so it's better to have a cs pit with the with brick lining and also you can use underground pits with the concrete and inside brick lining so this is also very cost effective if you use so this is about the uh, brick lining and material of construction is cs is used some people use about ss but ss is very costly so cs is used with brick lining now and brick lining with insulation all the tanks and all the walls all the flow meters whatever even jump over so these all are insulated insulation is good for providing the heat loss for 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 i can say that to, to override or to overcome the heat loss so you know that in different countries different places different temperature if uh, very low temperature then what uh, at what happened heat loss will be there and uh, sulfur may solid solidify so for that reason so uh, what i can say steaming is important and insulation is important if you are using steam but there is no insulation then at then maybe heat loss so you need to provide more steam and steam may get condensate and line may block and eventually sulfur will block so for that reason insulation is very much important plays an important role in saving and conserving the heat of the sulfur lines okay for insulation so see i can say you that uh, one inch core i can the minimum two inch insulation is required and uh, the insulation we uh, required is for mineral wool it should be mineral wool insulated generally and so many different types of uh, insulate insulation material have come but i suggest uh, mineral wool is good and uh, minimum two inch insulation is required and uh, minimum three inch four inch is up to you but i can say minimum is two inch is required and uh, after that now we'll go for the storage speed i have explained now we'll go for the sizing for sizing of pipe uh, tank all these are uh, described and designed as per uh, according to the production capacity how much store and how much you transport uh, for example if you have a good customer then small amount of uh, what i can say tanks are required but if you have less customer you want to store for a long period of time or the your customers are long away from your plant so it's better to have a long storage tank so according to that pits are store or design as per the what production and capacity now let's go for sulfur tanks i have explained you about that sulfur tanks are used Just like cs with brick lining or, or uh, concrete with brick lining underground pits are used now let's go for heat tracing you know that whatever the sulfur is collected we we have a vent provision so when when we vent the gases so sulfur may solidify so for that reason the line should not get uh, solidify either you have to supply steam to the line so that 
the vent line should not get plugged or else you can have heat tracing or steam heat tracer or electrical heat tracing so that this line always remain in hot condition and uh, generally submerged pumps are used and uh, some company use vertical or horizontal depending upon the um, uh, the part depending upon the design or the space and uh, plant design and different types of uh, ltpt we use here not differential nothing we use bubbler type and any type of uh, storage tank will have one uh, blind vent in which we open uh, and we can uh, what i can say that uh, we will take a manual dip for understanding that whether lt is good or not so for that it's better to have a manual dip so this is about this and uh, after that uh, we will go for underground pits i've explained you when pipe and heat tracing also completed yeah now the important thing and important aspect of that uh, why sulfur storage is important sulfur is storage is important for uh, for example if you don't store properly you may contaminate your sulfur and uh, if if doesn't uh, what store properly it may damage the equipment and corrosion or fire may take place and and so many things like uh, if fire take place and you may lose your sulfur and generation of so2 will take place for this reason it's important to store store sulfur in a well mannered so this is how we have to maintain and uh, one more thing i want to say that for pipe of uh, uh, 2 inch how much steam is required uh, energy is required to melt to keep the sulfur in liquid form um, for pressure of 75 psi it we we, we required a heat of 20 22 uh, from 20 to 26 or 25 btu per r feet square degree fahrenheit btu is nothing but british thermal unit so when you are using steam pipe uh, or steam coil yeah so these uh, once you have stored sulfur here once you have stored sulfur here but you know the temperature we have to maintain uh, in the molten form for that reason we we use steam coils steam coils are like this like this like this like this uh, in one end uh, steam will go and from another end condensate will be withdrawn so there will be steam jacketed or steam or um, steam coils will be there to maintain the sulfur temperature in molten form to maintain the temperature sulfur in molten form we use steam and steam is the cheapest method and electrical i can say that uh, it is not good why because uh, generally um, I, what first of all it is not cost effective another there may be chances of fire so it's better to use steam steam coil okay and uh, one more thing is that i have explained you about the why it is important to store sulfur and other thing is that we have to avoid uh, while storing we have to concern about that dust and uh, cyclone separator should be used and uh, static charge you know if a static charge is generated there may be chances of fire so sulfur is very flammable substance so it's, it's we have to main concern about that uh, we have to maintain about we have to check about the static charge and um, we have to uh, see about the wind temperature high temperature why because fire can take place any time so this is about the sulfur storage and uh, one more i want to say about that uh, how we handle in case of fire you know auto ignition of temperature is uh, 440 if there is no fuel there is uh, no source of ignition it can generate fire at auto ignition of 444 so it does not need any type of fuel to burn so if there is a fire how to how to extinguish the fire in pits for example you have underground pits if you find there is a fire just close the pit so there is no ingress of oxygen and fire may get extinguished and another best method is to use steam when you use steam what happen the fire, it will extinguish and reduces the oxygen and soon fire may get uh, get extinguished but if you use water high amount of energy is generated and tank may get pressurized so it's better and it's uh, and it's preferable to use steam instead of water okay so this all about the sulfur handling and sulfur method and uh, one more i have not covered the which types of walls are used 
generally we use plug wall why because uh, you know due to stream failure the line may get blocked so for that reason plug wall are applicable and generally used and good for that transfer of liquid sulfur from one end to another end and these sulfur plug wall are jacketed wall whether you use line steam line or tank or wall or any type of lt or ft all the things are steam jacketed to avoid the plugging of the sulfur okay now uh, i will explain you about the what are the properties are concerned when sulfur is produced in sulfur recovery unit the properties uh, are concerned about sulfur recovery unit are uh, the once uh, sulfur is produced we send it to lab and we check the arsenic content chloride content acidity and moisture content and iron content and ammonia content and h2s content sulfur and also carbon content carbon content nothing but organic compound organic uh, compound organic content in the sulfur so these things are very much important uh, when sulfur is produced from the close reactor you know if sulfur have more acidity uh, the lines are get corroded so to reduce the acidity even lime is used in the storage uh, and this sulfur we have to so these things are very important for example why these uh, properties are important uh, once sulfur is uh, stored in liquid form or granule form it will send to the other company so um, the liquid sulfur will will be used in the manufacture of sulfuric acid fertilizer and shampoos and so many things which I have uh, which I have covered in another video so we will we'll focus on the storage of sulfur and sulfur uh, recovery so these these properties are important to amend uh, the sulfur for using as a raw material for different types of products so these things are important yeah one more thing i want to cover that all these lines are insulated and should be insulated and all the lines are uh, what i can see steam jacketed uh, I, I want to explain you about how and why steam jacketed take example of uh, two pipes there is one pipe of two inch and inside there will be one more pipe it will be of one inch so from one inch one inch core pipe material will go and from the outside steam will flow like uh, heat exchanger we have uh, double pipe heat exchanger single pipe heat exchanger you know so in one pipe hot fluid will go and one pipe cold fluid will go so in this it is like a double pipe heat exchanger so in, uh, inside hot fluid will go and outside uh, steam will go to maintain the temperature so this is about the steam jacketed pipe for your understanding it is like a uh, steam jacketed and for the line you know we cannot have a long length of pipe anyhow at any end we need to join one line from another line so for that we use jump over jump over is used for maintaining the steam in the flange you know if you don't maintain the uh, if you don't maintain the proper temperature when if there is a big flange so for that uh, there will jump over like this for example you have connect pipe from here to here so we will keep uh, jump over steam like that so it will supply heat uh, of steam to the flanges so jump over are used so this is how we maintain sulfur uh, and um, this is how we maintain sulfur temperature how we store a sulfur so sulfur is storage in two we store sulfur from the close reactor in two form one is one is by granulation method another is by liquid uh, liquid storage so generally granulation method is preferred but if the length of the transfer of customer is very near generally most of the sulfuric acid company or fertilizer company if they need required uh, they need uh, to form so2 so they need to have liquid sulfur to maintain to avoid the what i can say steam consumption they buy sulfur in liquid form so what they do then they may have uh, steam jacketed tankers we transport from one end to other so those tanker are steam jacketed so and even insulated also so those tanker bring sulfur from sru plants and take to their um, respective company sulfuric acid company or fertilizer wherever they wherever they wanted to generate so2 whether for um, creating labs or haps or even for uh, sulfonation of different uh, types of product when they when they when they required for so2 
so they they bring sulfur liquid form and uh, sulfur generally sulfur pit will be in underground so that it will be easier for the unloading of sulfur so after that uh, what they will do they will transport it uh, in the liquid form and send it to the uh, other company so this is how sulfur is transported but in case if sulfur we have to transport for long distance like for, from one country to other or from one state to other it will be one from one province to other it will be very difficult to transfer and very difficult to maintain the temperature in the tank so for that reason sulfur is granulated sulfur sheets are formed sulfur pellets are formed and sulfur will be transported in solid bulk um, bulk uh, like uh, I can say in a solid uh, umber form or solid pieces or stone form so sulfur is stored in stone or in uh, but you know storing sulfur in stone is very difficult because it will be very difficult to the to the melt and very difficult to the oven you need uh, jaw crushers to melt that stone so generally sulfur is send it granular form so that less amount of heat is required to melt so sulfur for long distance sulfur is transported in the form of slakes stones or pellets or seeds or granule and for short distance sulfur will be good to transfer in the liquid form so in this video i have covered well about the storage of sulfur and how it is stored how it is transported and uh, what are the properties of sulfur and what are the things and forms of sulfur and sizing and if you have any doubts regarding the sulfur recovery unit and before ending the video again i will give you overview see we receive h2s in the cross reactor after that cross react uh, in the furnace it get uh, it, it burn and decomposes into sulfur and sulfur from different types of condenser from different types of condenser it comes here and comes through the tanks and this is called sulfur collection pit from here it go for the liquid storage and uh, liquid storage and uh, from liquid storage there will be one tank one tank all the tanks most of the tank go for uh, what uh, some tanks go for liquid storage some tanks go for granulation so from this tank sulfur is sent for the granulation for solidifying the sulfur so this will end the complete cycle of sulfur recovery unit and if you have any doubts regarding this please feel free to ask me and uh, i will soon i will make one powerpoint presentation for the properties of sulfur which are the important for maintaining this sulfurs okay thank you very much for viewing my video thanks a lot have a nice day